let's take I don't know fish for example, oh, yeah. which are rich in 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 polyunsaturated fats, right? Yeah. But most of the most of the data suggests that they're associated with improved health. Yeah, is it the inclusion of polyunsaturated fats in the diet, or is it um, the types of food that some polyunsaturated fats are found in? Uh-huh. I guess my question is: Is it them inherently, or is it the fact that a lot of ultra processed foods contain a lot of, say, ingredients um, that that have omega six fats, yeah. but also have a number of other inflammatory properties to them? Because we seem to have this debate online and amongst health professionals, where you know, one side, just to get yeah. you up to date, I guess, with with the debate, because we we had a, a debate on this show. One side would say that omega six fats are inherent. Um, inflammatory and problematic. And then the uh, counter to that is that no, they're essential fats and are not inherently inflammatory. But sure, if you're getting your omega-6 fats in ultra-processed foods, then that's going to be problematic. Yeah, good good one. <laughs> so I don't, know, I don't know if I've just I don't know if I've just thrown you in the middle of a massive debate. Oh but, yeah, you know. no, no, look, because I because that debate started like oh, about 2012, 2013. It really ripened up there, mm. and at that time, I thought I'd dip my toes in and see what everybody was banging on about, mm. um, and then promptly kind of just left it all right. alone because for me, it was looking like <sighs> yes, true. If if you're getting okay, so from what I could gather. The context of the omega six is just coming from bad foods is related to the analysis of the diet histories from things like the Harvard nurse study or you know all those epidemiology studies from the sixties and seventies that people use to say, oh, polyunsaturated fats cause heart disease or are bad for you and pro-inflammatory. And then when you go and have a look at the foods that people were getting them from, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like all well, these ultra-processed meats and, and sure. what have you. Whereas your, your fish example that you started off with are highly, uh, are more likely omega-3s. Mm. And then there's the whole debate of, oh, it's the ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s mm. that's important. Mm. Um, and if you, so if you then were to supplement a Ultra processed food with omega three oils. Right. Do you counteract counter, that? Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 I guess it, if we just zoom in though, let's yeah. let's forget all of that for a moment. Yeah. But from your um, understanding of the mitochondria yeah. and say mechanistic style studies that have looked at how a polyunsaturated fat affects mitochondrial efficiency. Yeah. Is there? It sounds like what you're saying is there is some evidence that polyunsaturated fats can have a negative effect on the mitochondria. Certain ones. That's right. And that's the other thing, right? So, uh, a, so a fat can be anywhere from four carbons long to like 30 carbons long. Mm. And then it will be polyunsaturated. That simply So saturated means that every electron in the chain of that fatty acid is saturated, is used up in a carbon or a hydrogen bond. That's mm. it. An unsaturated fat means that somewhere along that chain, there wasn't an absolute fixed or saturated bond. Mm-hmm. And so between two carbons, you might find it sharing two bonds. And... That will be, if it only occurs once in the chain, that's a monounsaturated fat. If it occurs twice or more, it's a polyunsaturated fat. And then depending upon where on the chain, depends upon whether it's omega-3 or omega-6, right? So what we could be having the issue over here is an omega-6 polyunsaturated fat that is X carbons long is particularly damaging Mm. Mm. versus an omega-6 polyunsaturated fat which is only this kind of long, yeah. right? And to assume that they're all going to be particularly detrimental is is a question that needs to be asked. But we do know that there are certain omega-6 polyunsaturated fats that promote an inflammatory state mm-hmm. right. when you consume them. Right. Okay. Now, and so what studies? Are they, are they kind of like certain animal studies? No, no, I'm, no. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm genuinely yeah, yeah. interested in, no, in what no, this no. is. So so. There's, there's, there's human ones. There's, there was, um, so I was, I was working with a group a number of years ago where we reviewed the literature and it was interesting, um, completely different question, but it relates to this. Women consuming, in human studies, women consuming omega-6 polyunsaturated fats, or diet high in omega-6 polyunsaturated fat, and the inc- higher incidence of asthma in their offspring. Right. And, and so that was, they differentiated between ultra-processed foods with omega-6 no. and like hemp seeds or something. No, no. no. See, and that's the thing, right? <laughs> it's using diet histories right. from yeah. the studies in the 80s right. and the 90s. And so you've got that whole okay. mess So there's there. a cav- there's an asterisk next to it. Yeah, 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 right? Okay. So, but uh, when we think of like olive oil, olive oil's got, a bunch mm. of omega-6 polyunsaturated right. fat in it, right? Great health outcomes. And, and it's the hallmark of the Mediterranean mm. diet. And as long as you're not 
cooking with it over right. a certain temperature or whatever, mm. right? So I'm not a blanket, oh, mm. no, right. all omega-6s are going to be bad for you mm. um, and all omega-3s are going to be good for you and all saturated fats are okay or not depending upon what paper yeah. comes out this mm. week. Um, but there is evidence to show certain omega-6 polyunsaturated fats more likely to be pro-inflammatory. Yeah. Now, from the mitochondrial perspective, what that means is there might be more of this thing called tumor necrosis factor alpha floating around or this other thing called monocyte chemoattractant protein 1 around. And what that means is within the cell where those molecules are found, you'll have a lot more of your immune cells, such as these things called macrophages, that then reside, they live, and they then start generating lots of other pro-inflammatory mm. molecules, mm. interleukins, cytokines, mm. things like that. And when those are getting produced, then you start seeing mitochondria breaking down. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So, a um, couple of things. I yeah. think we put a pin in, in the Omega-6. I want yeah, to come yeah. back to that. Yeah. I'm going to send you a paper, a review by a scientist. I think his name is Philip Calder. Okay. Um, it was a recent review cool. that I read and it was about some of this stuff on inflammation, which I think is interesting. But of course, there's a lot of nuance in it. And um, so, maybe we can come so, back to that. And, and, and with that, if we think about things, so the, the example I think of, there's a Sydney Diet Heart Study. Right. And the polyunsaturated fat that they put all of these men on to was safflower oil and because it was supposed to help them for their cardiovascular disease risk and it made conditions worse for them. Now, we don't use safflower oil anymore. Right. But it's an yeah. omega-6 that was... That one came up in the debate. Mm. Oh, did it? Yeah. There we go. And I think there was a... There's an asterisk that's... A slight asterisk on that study. Yeah. This is, this is fascinating. Uh, I love this. Yeah. Well, the, the margarine that was used, the safflower margarine, yeah. that was... What was the brand name again? Um... Escape. Can't recall, but it had a high percentage of trans fats. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind yeah. of... Was, Can you make was, a trans was, fat free margarine yeah, right. or, with safflower or, 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 or was that a confounder that, that yeah. actually influenced the results of the study? Yes. Because trans fats are going to definitely affect cardiovascular right. disease risk. So maybe the folks that had were randomized to this omega-6 rich intervention arm, if they were unknowingly consuming trans fats, because at the time it was sort of established, but it wasn't out of the food supply. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then, you know, it may have confounded the study. It's interesting because like the LA veteran study, which yes. also came up in that debate, yeah, yeah, yeah. the complete opposite results. You know, they had, they were, the intervention arm had a blend of corn, um, safflower, three or four different uh, oils and significantly lower heart disease. But didn't and they have increased cancer risk? They, they did, but it yes. was very small. Like yes. relative to the, the improvement in cardiovascular disease yeah. events, right? So, the, yeah, I think the primary outcome was cardiovascular events, but there was definitely something to do with cancer there. I think that yeah. came up in the debate it did as well. Come up in the debate, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was a higher rate of cancer development in the intervention group yes. than in the control group. But again, it's it's like I know eighty people or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. Um, but what we're doing here is we're falling into the hallmark trap that nutritional science has done for the last fifty years that we need to really change, and it's. It's not about the fat and it's not about mm. the sugar. It's about when we eat the foods and it's the interaction between the two, it, yes. right? Mm. Yeah. And the quality and, of the food, the overall dietary pattern. Yeah. 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 And, and we can feed a high-fat diet to a rodent and it can be quite all right. Mm. Um, mm. But we can give that same fat diet with sugar water, bam, the animal's sick, Yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so how the interaction in the metabolic system occurs is what we have to yes. unpack. 